Good morning, everyone. Uh, firstly, I have to say this is not my work. I have a friend of my friends to do the presentation. Um, don't worry, I will try my best to, to explain their work. The title of the work is uh, Interactive Recommendation While Deep Neural Memory Augmented Contextual Bandits. Here are the author's name. Oh, sorry. Uh, oh. Uh, but I, uh, sorry. Uh, there, there's something wrong here. Uh, this one. Don't have it. The monitor. Yeah. Like slides on the monitor. Oh, great. Yes. No. Okay. It's hard to go back. Okay, here is the content. I will introduce the background and problem firstly. So the interactive recommendation is everywhere. For example, the interactive video recommendation, interactive with the personal assistant agent, and the interactive search engine we use every day. Contextual bandits hope to maximize the accumulative reward through the interactive run, taking an action and get the reward. Let's see an example. A user is an agent. Firstly, he saw the fixed state of all the slot machines, and the user chose a machine to try. And the user observed the reward of the selected slot machine. So the user learned the knowledge. The knowledge can help him to do the future selection. In the interactive recommendation setting, each user is considered as a, an action A, and each item has a fixed state. The context can be considered as the combination of user's information and all the items. So here, uh, the authors gave a new model called deep neural memory augmented contextual bandit, shortly the DMCB model. Uh, as we know, the, pre the previous work on the MAB can't model the dependency between the context in different rounds. But in practice, at each round, the actual context changed based on the previous select actions and observed rewards. So the DMCB hope to model the latent context through the interaction history to maximize the reward. There are two attentional, there are two attention, attentional components. Let's see the figure. The first one is the action and the reward history. The second one is the DMCB. DMCB have been used in each round. Let's see the architecture. There are mainly four components. The first component is the controller, which just like the brain of the DMCB. It instructs the read operation and the write operation to estimate the values. For the read operation, it takes the observed context, x, u, a, t, as input. Then it uses the read then it used the read head to estimate the value v t u a of each action. After the read operation, we select an action and we do the write operation. I take the pair of select item and its reward. Then he used the right head to update the history state. So let's see how the history state, how it works. There are mainly two components of the history state. One is in the external memory state. It's in charge of scoring the latent uh, features in previous interaction. And another is the controller state, which gets the interaction with the external memory. There are mainly two advantages for the history state design. One is we can use a very, sh a very small number of interaction to learn the user's preference. The second, uh, through the memory, external memory, we can share the model among all the users. 
So, so far, we get the main idea of the research. So, how to make the, how, how to change, how to make the idea into the code, into the algorithm. There are two parts of our algorithm. One is the offline training across all the users. The goal is design mini batch mechanism to keep the meaning of history state during the offline training. There are two important design, two special design. One design is they do the shuffle the history for each user. Let's see the example. There are four users, and each user have the, their action, their state in order. Here, they do the shuffle one, the, sh the shuffle operation to shuffle the history for each user. And the second uh, special design is a mini batch. In each mini batch, they select uh, the item for one or more users as a sample with, an, with, with one mini batch. Uh, the two special designs can help we get the more diversity data and samples and to train more robust models. I asked the authors, they told me they compare the shuffled manners and the unshuffled manners. The shuffled manners get better results. After offline training, they do the online training for each user with the user's data. Here, uh, there is a special design for the online training. Uh, they borrowed the idea from the DeepQ network. They used the replay buffer to slow the transition instance. The transition instance include the, the state and the reward they compute be, before, they get before. Let's see the loss function here. In the loss function the L online, there are two parts. One part is the reward, the difference between the reward and the, the estimated value at the wrong t. Another, um, the, 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 other, the other loss function we see in the second part, um, it comes from the transition instance. Um, the MCB model sample some, some, some transition instance and to compute the loss function. Here they use the um, decay epsilon gradient to handle the exploration and exploitation problem. Here, I think they can try use other E method to choose an action here. Let's see the flow. They start with the right operation at round T uh, on the first part of the figure. And they end with the read phrase at round T. Okay, we get, uh, we, we, so far we know the algorithm. Let's see some Expand results. The research gave some state of art uh, MAB method, uh, namely linear uh, lin UCB, hybrid lin UCB, hidden lin UCB, and some sampling with online matrix factorization, and the UCB with matrix factorization, collab and the colin. Firstly, they do the experiment on the synthetic data set. Uh, there are 30 items, and each item have 25 dimension features, and each user have five dimension features, uh, feature, feature vectors. XUA is a combination of XA and XU. For the synthetic uh, data side, they need to compute the reward, so they design two kind of simulator, namely linear reward simulator and the collaborative simulator. Both of the simulator at the Gauss noise. Let's see the results. For all the simulators, the DMCB outperformed other baseline models up to 20%. And the rig rates reduced a lot after 25 rounds. They also apply their algorithm on some real world side. The Yahoo data side, last FM data side, and the delicious data side. Uh, I don't have time, so you can find the data description in the paper. So let's see the results. Um, the first column is the loss in the offline training part. The second uh, row is the evalu uh, policy evaluation through the online training. 
The first column is the results for the Yahoo data set. We can see they use the CTR ratio. And the last two columns is the last FM data and the delicious data. Uh, for the online part, they use the collaborate, uh, they, they use the cognitive reward as the metrics. So the DMCB outperform other computer, um, competitors, and the reward can increase significantly after round 15. Uh, this, is the, this is the last slide, I think. And uh, uh, I'm not a MAB guy, uh, but for my understanding, um, that's not a, that may be a not perfect work. They, sh they should do, uh, for example, in the online part, they can do more uh, EE, Method, not just uh, decay, uh, epsilon, yeah. And uh, mm, for the offline part, uh, they do the shuffled uh, method, the shuffled user's information, the user's history, the state. And uh, I think they should try, they should show the result uh, if they don't use the shuffled uh, machine mechanism, what happened there. So uh, thank you, this is uh, the talk. Thank you very much. So uh, thank you for helping your colleagues out. Uh, I'm not sure we should have a section on questions, but maybe we postpone that and you uh, establish contact to the authors uh, in case of questions, right? No problem. Okay, thank you very much again. So. Thank you.